words. But none of them sufficed because something was missing. Something was missing. So let's read this story. You'll remember as we get into it here in John 4, verse 3. He left Judea, departed again to Galilee, and he must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water, and Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away into the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with. The well is deep, and from whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Jesus was already talking to her that something's missing in her life. But I can give you something to fill your life for eternity. It goes on to say in verse 15, The woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water, and I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Jesus said unto her, Go, call thy husband and come hither. Oh, he's setting her up on that. And he already knew she had multiple husbands because she'd been with many men. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, Oh, yeah, thou hast well said, I have no husband, for thou hast had five husbands. And he whom thou now hast is not thy husband, and that sayest thou truly. He's really not your husband. He's the man you're living with, you're with, but you've been with five the woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Well, if he read her, then that's why she thought he was a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Well, I'm going to stop there. I went a little further than I was going to. So here's a woman. She comes to the well. She's empty. We know she's empty because she's been in five relationships and still was trying to seek out love. Because she's with the fifth man but was not married to him. Something was missing. Something was missing. Jesus was trying to tell her, you know, I drink a lot of water, and I drink, I drink actually a lot of things. And I don't know if any of y'all, do any of y'all pour uh, flavoring in your bottled water besides me? Several of you do. Do you know what that flavoring does when I pour it into my water? It makes me more thirsty. Do you know why? I drink a lot of diet pop being a diabetic. I like pop. I drink a lot of diet pop. Do you know what that has in it? Sodium. Most of the additives that we add to the water has sodium. But I'm really thirsty and I drink a cold bottle of water or, or get it from the house or sometimes just make a glass of ice water and I do that a lot and I drink it, man, it quenches my thirst. Do you know how many Diet Mountain Dews it takes to quench my thirst? I can drink a 12-ounce Diet Mountain Dew in a can. That's my favorite. Ice cold. I drink it. Lori says I inhale it. It's gone in a matter of three to four seconds. I turn it up. Bam, it's over. Sometimes I only have to go back and get a sip. It's already gone. Suck the bottom out. And I'm wanting another one right after it. And another one right after it. Doesn't quench my thirst. It's because it's not the right thing to quench my thirst. It's actually adding something else into my body that's not quenching my thirst. It's actually telling my body I need more. Now, see, that's what life does. And I use that illustration. Now, I, I don't drink three Mountain Dews every day, by the way, but I'm just giving that illustration that if I'm not careful, that can happen because it does not quench my thirst. But when I drink water, 
by itself, it quenches my thirst better than anything. Some people say, well, I just don't like the taste of water. You know, when we're going through life, we're empty and we need to be fulfilled. And this woman of Samaria, she was empty and the Lord knew that. And see, the Lord knew. He, he knew in all His sovereignty of who He is. He's in charge. He knows everything going on in our lives. And see, He was not supposed to go through Samaria. It was the wrong thing for Jesus and the disciples to go through Samaria. They were to go around Samaria because that's just what you did. You didn't encounter the Samaritan people. But Jesus Jesus knew that the woman that needed to be fulfilled was going to be at the well at that time. So he on purpose made sure the disciples went and got meat. Now maybe there was a meat sale going on at Marketplace or maybe he went to Hamptons and bought it by quantity. I'm not sure. But all I know is he sent them to buy meat that they would not be with him. Because if they would have been with him, they would have fought or kept the woman from coming to the well. But Jesus knew she was coming and he knew that she was empty and she needed filling. Wow. And there's several important points about fulfillment here. And I borrowed this. This is not mine, but it really spoke to me. Fulfilling our emptiness is important to the Lord. I thought that was great. Fulfilling our emptiness is important to the Lord. If you're empty, God wants you to be fulfilled. Now, not of arrogancy, not, not of pride, but God wants you to be filled. God wants you to understand. He wants to use everybody. You know, I, I can just begin to talk and, and, and start pulling people out. Because you never know how God's going to use you in a place in what we do in serving the Lord. Fulfilling our emptiness is important to the Lord. You know? Uh, I, I, these things are popping in my head as I'm standing here just uh, uh, talking. It's you. Some of you, you're, you're popping in my head uh, as, as this morning we watched... Uh, uh, Madison come forward and and uh, Tammy you weren't here I was looking you were in class somewhere I believe take care of children's church if I understood and but I was looking for Tammy I was looking for Tammy for a purpose because Madison wanted to be saved and and so Renee and Tammy was instrumental in Madison being saved and Tammy talked to her. And then I got a note from Tammy how blessed she was, if I remember that correctly, based upon talking to Madison and leading her to Jesus. But see, she had confidence in Tammy, wanted to talk to Tammy. And what a great thing. Tammy's like, well, I don't know if I can do this or not. Tammy had even told me that. She didn't even tell me before, Brother Gary, you know, I, I get nervous talking. Anybody here get nervous sharing Jesus and sharing, and sharing even leading a child to the Lord? And there's like 8 or 10, 12 hands going, yeah, yeah. So see, you're not by yourself. We're all that way. But she did it. Madison got it <laughs> and was gloriously saved. Isn't that awesome? God uses ordinary people to fulfill lives. Wow, I could just continue on with that thought and, and how God's... We're, we're getting ready to start Awana. And, and so I know that, that, that Karen is searching and looking and looking for people and recruiting people. And, uh, so look out. If you don't want to work in Awana, you better get out of here fast every service because Karen's going to be on you. And that blesses my heart. She's trying to find other people to help in Awana because uh, here's a problem we got. Our wine is growing more. And more new families are coming because of our children's programs. Isn't that, isn't that a terrible thing? But what that means is we got to have more teachers. Because we want to make sure we're doing what we can to do what? Fill the emptiness even in a child's life. If I'm not understand, if I understand correctly today, somebody can correct me. I'm not sure who was back. I think Jetta and Ron had to stay. Whoever worked the two and three year old nurse, uh, two and three year old children's church this morning, twenty two or twenty three two and three year olds. 
in children's church this morning, just in the two and three year old class. Now I'm going to tell you right now, praise Jesus for such a class, but we got to do something. Because you cannot control 23, two and three year olds. Hello? Don't you put me back there, I'll hang them on hooks. <laughs> I'm not the man to go in the two and three year old. I can deal with them one at a time down here on the ground and I can talk to them and just as soon as mama moves them on, shoo, I'm glad. But you put 22 and 23 of them rascals together, isn't that a wonderful problem? 22 and 23, two and three year olds in children's church. Just that one group. It's not counting those others. Oh, but we want to fulfill. You know, this, this morning watching Madison come forward and, and, and now that emptiness is fulfillment of knowing Christ as Lord and Savior of our life. See, fulfilling our emptiness is important to the Lord. And so as Jesus and the disciples journeyed, Jewish people always went past Samaria because of their hatred for the Samaritans. Jesus, a Jew, wanted to go right into Samaria because he knew there was a hurting Samaritan woman who was ready to hear about the Father's love. Now see, I told you something last week. My wife was upset that the restaurants got messed up as the women were coming back from their, their conference and they had to end up going to another restaurant which the service was absolutely horrible. But then two or three other ladies walked up and said, hold it, it may have been bad service, but there was a woman that had just gotten some absolute terrible news in her life and we were able to pray with her right there at that restaurant and we would not have been there to pray with her if that had not got mixed up. See, God knows even to move us in order that we can fulfill somebody. We stopped at Golden Corral going through Clarksville the other day. And guys, that girl that was taking our money at the cash register, when I got to her, I said, Hun, we're a bunch of Christian men and we're fixing to pray. I said, is there something we can pray for you about? Something we can, can lift up in prayer? She's like, uh, uh. I, there is, but I just can't get it out of my mouth right now. I mean, she was just so thrown back. And I said, listen, I'll call your name. I read her badge. I think it was Betty or Wanda. I'm trying to remember and I can't. But I, I said, we'll call your name out and we'll just pray for you when we pray. Being an encouragement to somebody. See, Jesus went all the way out of his way, went through Samaria where you didn't go because he knew there was a hurting Samaritan was ready to hear about the Father's love. Listen to the still small voice when the still small voice speaks to you. Do what the small voice says. We never know where God's taking us or leading us for what purpose that somebody is hurting on the way. And when God says, speak a word to this person or leave an extra tip or say something kind to this person, do it. Because God wants to use us to fulfill others. And he places us in their paths to do so. It's important. This passage also talks about our attempts at happiness often leave us feeling hopeless. You, you can try, I tried alcohol, I tried some drugs, I tried running around with the party crowd, I tried to let that fill my void. I, I said no to God, uh, coming out of college, married Lori, still wanted to be a part of the social alcohol crowd, climb the ladder of success, be a part of the country club, the Lions Club, the Jaycees. I wanted all that and still, guess what, there was emptiness in my life. Why? I was not in the will of God, and I was God's child. And I was in total rebellion against God. And until I said no to the world and the things of the world and turned my life to Jesus, man, there was an emptiness. The woman at the well had been married five times or been with five men, but everything had failed. None of them worked. People get married and say, well, I hope it works. Well, listen, Lori and I solved that a long time ago. I don't know, it may have been her that started it, may have been me, I'm not sure, but we got into a spat, you know, a little disagreement, you know, a small discussion. 
I don't know if she said, I'm packing my bags, or I said, I'm packing my bags. But the other one said, well, I'm, hold on, let me get one packed, I'm going with you. And we said it clear up front that no matter what happened, the other one was going to go too. Wow. It's going to work. But this lady, all of her marriages, all her lives, all her relationships had failed. Whether or not the problems were her fault, we don't know. She could have been guilty. The men could have been guilty. We don't know who was guilty. Amen. You know, sometimes that's a problem. We just spend all the time blaming everybody. Amen. But she was left without the love she sought. Most likely, each broken relationship left her feeling lonelier than before. Now realize that we actually have people that are married that are lonely. Some of you here tonight, you may be married, but you may be lonely. You may be widowed, and you may feel lonely. My mom would tell me that more times than one. I miss your daddy so much. I, I just like to talk to him. I just miss him so much. My mamma used to say that. I miss your papa so much. I even miss his sports channel on the TV all the time. Because my papa Herbert was a sports fanatic. Every sport you could ever think of. My granddad, he was 6'3", big tall fella. That's where Chris gets in. He loves sports, golf, basketball. I mean, he even liked the NBA of all of them. I don't like the NBA. Papa loved the NBA. He loved, he loved all this sports. And Mamma said, I, I miss the sports channel being on every morning, every day. I miss that. Sometimes there are circumstances of life that cause us to be lonely. Lonelier than we have been. That's where we need to be in touch with Jesus even more. But this lady, her broken relationship, she had she felt lonelier than before. Our attempts at happiness often leave us feeling hopeless. Has anybody desired to have food and you wanted, you thought you had a craving for some kind of food and you went and ate it? Jamie's like, yep, preacher all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Them onions and potatoes at Golden Corral, that was it. And they didn't come back and fill them up, did they? Jamie's like, they, they didn't come back and fill them up. And my onion and potatoes, they's good. Took them guys into that Golden Corral buffet. You thought you turned a herd of cattle loose. <laughs> they's walking around with two plates. None of them was full. It's like, preacher, where do we stop and start filling up? There's like stuff everywhere. I don't know which one to go to. Just go to one of them. But I was just trying to be a blessing. I ate tacos. You're welcome. <laughs> but you want something to eat. You think you have a craving for it and you go eat it. And when you leave, anybody know what kind of feeling you have? Well, that didn't do it. Yuck. I feel worse now than I did when I ate. Has anybody ever done that besides me? Maybe, okay, there's a few. Yeah, it's like I feel worse now and I'm like bloated and sick feeling and it didn't take care of it at all. You know, but when you get that that really tastes good, you don't have to have much of it and it fulfills you. See, that's Jesus. Our attempts at happiness often leave us feeling hopeless. Is the third thing, God knows our pain. Now, I know it doesn't seem like God knows your pain, but this woman of Samaria, God knew her pain. God knew she was lonely. She was out there doing her chores. She was going to get water. She was at the well. He knew she would be there, but God also knew that she was empty inside. And God knew she had pain. And God knew that she, that she needed to be fulfilled, but she needed to have the right kind of fulfillment. And that would only come from Him. The right kind of water, living water. God knows your pain. I don't know what your pain is tonight. A lot of our pain is medically induced. We medically have pain. Legs hurt. I, I've got automobiles I own that I'll drive over the other one because of a sciatic nerve. Now, probably some of you are like that in situations. Lori's Ultima. I can drive that Ultima. If I drive it very far, i got to stick something under my leg. Wayne used to teach me, Marlene, to put a wedge under it. 
He'd say, preacher, put that wedge under that leg. Sure enough, I'll tilt that seat up just as far as I can and I'll roll a towel or something stick under that leg and I can make it so much further when I do that. And, and there's just pain. God knows your pain. Arthritis. A lot, a lot of different diseases. When the woman admitted she didn't presently have a husband, Jesus revealed that he already knew she and the man living with her were not married. <laughs> he already knew it. By demonstrating his awareness of her hurt and pursuit of fulfillment, he helped the woman recognize that she needed a Savior. Listen, I, I can give you the water that will last everlasting. Wow. Living water. And you can leave here different. All oh, friends, tonight, I wonder if you're empty. God wants you to be filled. God wants you to be filled. I, Joe Nail and Karen, uh, Karen, you were on the organ, and Tammy was an awesome job on How Great Thou Art. I don't know if you heard the instrumental part, but it blessed my heart. I actually didn't sing the first three verses I was listening because it just blessed my heart. And see, I'm trying to say something. You, that fulfilled me. That I, I just said, wow, listen to them play. And it was such a blessing listening to them play that song. I almost said, Jonathan, stop and just let them play. Because it was fulfilling me. It was, it was fulfilling and I heard that. See, God uses those things. I don't know what you do for Jesus, but always remember you're fulfilling in ways you don't understand. So many that you're sitting here tonight. God knows. And, and, and so don't think that, you know, I'm no good and I can't be used for anything. That's the devil. The devil wants you to think that you can't be used for something. The devil wants you to think that. And he wants you to feel that emptiness. Huh. So Jesus demonstrated and gave her that awareness of her hurt and, and helped her recognize she needed a Savior. And then lastly, Jesus can satisfy our yearnings, our desires, our emptiness. See, once the Samaritan woman realized what was missing, Jesus revealed how to live a full life. Verse 13 and 14. Jesus answered and said, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. If you drink of the well water, you're going to thirst again. See, I never get enough water. Now, it is medicated. That's why I drink. And I'll